Hello everyone. In this session, I will demonstrate you the general features of scapula. This is the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade. It lies on the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage. The scapula has two surfaces, the anterior or costal surface which is concave, the posterior or dorsal surface which is convex and has the attachment of spine or spinous process. Then there are three borders, superior border, lateral border and medial border, three angles, superior angle, inferior angle, lateral angle and there are three processes, coracoid process, acromion process and the spinous process or spine. Now coming to the costal surface, the costal surface is concave which fits on the convex thoracic wall. It is directed forwards and medially in anatomical position. So this is the costal surface. Whereas the dorsal surface, we can see there is attachment of the spine and divides the dorsal surface into two fossa above the spine. This is the supraspinous fossa and below the spine, this is the infraspinous fossa. The costal surface is also known as the subscapular fossa. Now out of three borders, the thickest border is the lateral border. The lateral border extends from lateral angle to inferior angle. So this is the lateral border. In the upper part of the lateral border, here we can see infraglenoid tubercle. This is the infraglenoid tubercle. Then this is the medial border which is thin compared to lateral border. It extends from superior angle to inferior angle. And this is the superior border which is also thin. And laterally here there is a notch along the superior border. This notch is known as suprascapular notch. This is the suprascapular notch. Now there are three angles. This is the inferior angle, this is the superior angle and the lateral angle is known as glenoid angle which bears a large fossa or cavity. This is known as the glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity. So this should be facing laterally. Now out of three processes, the spine or the spinous process is attached to dorsal surface the posterior border of the spine is known as the crest of spine which has an upper lip and a lower lip. We can say upper margin or the lower margin of the crest of the spine. Above it, this is supraspinous fossa and below it is the infraspinous fossa. Second process, this process which is continuous with the spine is the acromion process. The acromion process has lateral border, medial border, superior surface, inferior surface and near the tip there is a facet which will articulate with the lateral end of clavicle and form acromioclavicular joint. So this is the acromioclavicular joint between the facet on the tip of the acromion process and the lateral end of clavicle. The third process is the coracoid process. In anatomical position, the coracoid process faces forwards and laterally. The coracoid process is an important example of atavistic epiphysis. It has a tip, superior surface, inferior surface, medial border and lateral borders. And there is a root of coracoid process. This is the root. Now this notch, sorry, this notch is the spinoglenoid notch where the 
spine is attached to the glenoid angle. So this notch is known as the spinoglenoid notch. So there are two notches. One is the spinoglenoid notch and the other notch along the superior border is a suprascapular notch. So how to determine the side of scapula? We can easily recognize the anterior, the costal surface is concave which should be directed forward and medially whereas the dorsal that is posterior surface has the attachment of the spine. So keep the spine on the posterior side in such a way that the glenoid cavity is facing laterally forwards and slightly upwards. So this is the left side scapula and this is how to hold in anatomical position such that the costal, face, costal surface faces forward and medially and the glenoid cavity faces laterally forward and slightly upwards. So this completes our general features on scapula. Thank you.